Hello, good morning everyone. Today we are going to discuss about sedimentary processes. In the first chapter we will be discussing about sedimentary process, disintegration, decomposition of rocks, transportation, deposition and diagenesis. The unit also would involve a broad classification of sedimentary rocks. When we talk about sedimentary process, as you know, the sedimentary rocks are derived from pre-existing rocks. So, the pre-existing soil rock must undergo weathering. You have already learned about weathering in your first and second semester, in which you must have also learned about different types of weathering, that is physical weathering and chemical weathering. So, the disintegration and decomposition of rock is nothing but the physical and chemical weathering respectively. After that, we will be also talking about the transportation of the disintegrated or decomposed rock material and eventually it has to undergo deposition. Once after the deposition, all these sedimentary particles would undergo a process called diagenesis which is the making of the or baking of the sedimentary rock. As I have mentioned, we will be discussing more about the sedimentary process. The references for this lecture is shown in this slide. Let us discuss about origin and transport of sedimentary material. Sedimentary rocks form through a, co a complex set of processes which include weathering, erosion and transportation of material. When we talk about weathering, which is nothing but the physical disintegration and chemical decomposition of older rock to produce solid particulate residues, which are the minerals resistant to the weathering process and some rock fragments. Along with that, it also produces dissolved chemical substances. So, when a rock undergo weathering, it produces two types of things, one is solid particle residue and the second one is dissolved chemical substances. Some solid products of weathering may accumulate in situ which is the place of its origin to form soils and can be preserved in the geological record as a paleosols. Paleosols are nothing but the soils that developed in the past. And the second process as we have mentioned is the erosion and transportation which involves the weathering residues are generally removed from the weathering sites by erosion and subsequently transported possibly along with fragmented products of explosive volcanism to a distant deposition and sites. When we talk about the transport of siliciclastic detritus to the depositional basins, it can involve a variety of process. So, the transportation could be mass transport process or fluid flow processes. When we talk about mass transport process, it includes processes such as slums, debris flow and mud flow which are the important agents in the initial stages of the sedimentary transport from the weathering sites to the valley floor. This you must have heard in the case of landslides or earthquakes, this produces such sudden movement of soil material that is like debris flow or mud flow or even slump which are nothing but the decomposed rock material that was formed in a place as soil and this get removed and transported to a new place. And when we talk about the fluid flow processes that agents include moving water, glacial ice and wind. So, these geological agents move sediment from the valley floor to depositional basin at a lower elevation. And next process is deposition, mass transport process or fluid flow processes when such processes are no longer capable of moving sediment, deposition of this solid residue or even dissolved fluids 
happens. So the soil residues include deposition of sand, gravel and mud which takes place when the transport processes are no longer capable of moving sediment. They either subaerially moved and got deposited that is the case in case of desert dune fields or it may be also transported subaqueously in cases of river system or lakes or the marginal oceans. Then there is a process as I have mentioned called diagenesis. Sediments deposited in basins are buried and undergo physical and chemical changes resulting from increased temperature, pressure and the presence of chemically active fluids. Such process we call it as diagenesis in the presence of chemically active fluids. So we call it as burial diagenetic process which convert silicyclastic sediments to lithified sedimentary rock. When we talk about silicyclastic, it is nothing but granular rock fragments include silica that get deposited some places and it forms as a lithified sedimentary rock. Example for which includes conglomerate, sandstone and shale. Now let me show you a rock called shale. So here the clastic particles are very fine and it deposited layer by layer and it got compressed under higher pressure and all the period of time because of the physical and chemical changes it has solidified to form as a solid rock. So each lines that you see in this rock is basically deposited as a layer to form as a rock called shale. Similarly, you have a rock called sandstone. All the clasts in, the sand, in this rock are of sand sized particles, 2 mm to 63 micrometer. So, which means that all the, the whole rock is composed of particles which is sand sized grains. Even sometimes the structures are also preserved on the surface of such rocks. You can see the ripple marks preserved on the surface of this rock. So, this is what we call it as sandstone. So, to give you some examples. So, the weathering process release soluble constituents such as calcium, magnesium and silica from the source rocks that make their way in surface water and groundwater to lakes or the ocean. When concentration of these chemical elements become sufficiently high, they are removed from the water by chemical and biochemical process to form something called chemical sediments. Subsequent burial and diagenetic alteration of these sediments generates lithified sedimentary rock. The example for which is limestone, chert, evaporites and other chemical or biochemical sedimentary rock. So in this slide we have discussed about two types of sedimentary rock. One is of generally coarse grained sedimentary rock, we call it as plastic sedimentary rock which means that you can make out individual grains with the naked eye or with the aid of a hand lens. So conglomerate generally have a larger grain sized particles in the rock whereas sandstone has a sand sized particles and shale has clay sized particles. So that is about the rocks that has been formed from the silicyclastic sediments. And the second type of rock includes the soluble constituents such as calcium, magnesium and silica that go into solution because of the chemical decomposition. And during the burial and diagenetic alteration, these soluble constituents get lithified and form as a non-clastic sedimentary rock, example for which is limestone, chert, evaporites and other chemical or biochemical sediments. The origin of sedimentary rocks involves weathering of older rock to generate the materials that make up the sedimentary rock. The erosion and transportation of weathered debris and soluble constituents to the depositional basin. Deposition of this material in continental, if it is continental then we call it as 
heterogeneous. So I want to insist upon some of these terms that we will be often using in the upcoming lectures for marine environments. And the dialectic alteration during burial to ultimately produce a lithified sedimentary rock. This is how we sum up how the sedimentary rock is formed. 